Philly real estate, find you the best rate. I'll do all Philly like Google Expressway. Talking to people who added the top. Hello, everyone. Welcome. I am your local real estate agent here in the Philadelphia, greater Philadelphia area with the Harnick team. Um, they are also in the same office. So a lot of the times when I interview people, I think I interview people from different professions, backgrounds, uh, history. Uh, but I thought it would be pretty meaningful for me to interview someone who I really, really enjoy uh, and also love learning from. So uh, here we are with Matt Harnick and Michelle. Uh, yeah, and we're going to just talk a little bit about just the real estate world and um, a little bit about our business, but mostly their business. So Thanks, if you guys would like to give us a brief introduction about yourselves and uh, we'll take it from there start with me sure um, so yes as John said my name is Michelle I am the operations manager for the Mount Harnick team I've been with the team for three years so I handle everything on the back end um, pretty much anything that doesn't involve buying or selling real estate um, all documentation client interaction that is where I shine you do have your real estate license though. I do. Yes, yes, yes. 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 License to the end of last year. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's awesome to have. I mean, I've had some great conversations with people about real estate. Yeah. And then on our business side with our clients, I actually don't have to go, wait, I need to get clarification <laughs> yeah. and Matt needs to call you back. I can answer that, um, which is actually fun for me because I hated having to say, no, I can't answer of that because of, um, yeah. of legal reasons. So to be able to take that next level is awesome. So thanks. Uh, I'm Matt Harnick, uh, team leader of the Harnick team. Uh, I've been licensed now since, oh my goodness. A long time. Uh, actually next month will be 18 years um, and full-time practicing agent for almost 15. Um, and I am the rainmaker of the team and chief cook and bottle washer until Mish came along and now we both are chiefs, cooks, and bottle washers. <laughs> And that's great. And just a little bit more of how your team formed. I know that um, you briefly told me your history. And by, th by the way, guys, this is our second time doing this video. <laughs> so just full disclosure. And it was really good last time. So, so we have very high hopes for this time. <laughs> but uh, to go back to my question, just a little bit more about your history, your walk into the real estate world just yep. from the beginning. Obviously, I'll get to you. As yeah, well, take your time. Well niche, but just your walk into the real estate world and how you developed and made the Matt Harding team. Wow, okay, so the very, very brief history. Um, I am a fourth generation real estate um, person. So great grandfather was a uh, developer, grandfather and dad were investors. I started as an investor, bought my first place at 24 years old, um, decided to get licensed um, about 10 years later when my oldest son was born, um, which was in 2006. And I was still running a business at that point, which a few years later um, sort of tailed off as we entered the 2008-2009 recession. Um, at that point with a three-year-old and a three-month-old, um, and my wife was home taking care of both, um, I decided to get into real estate full-time in the middle of a banking crisis and a housing crisis. So I'm still here. What, what, <laughs> so what, what year is that? What year is that? Full-time 2009 into okay. 2010. So that was a tough, yeah, yeah, yeah. tough time. So, yeah, I mean, that's that's it. So I started as an investor, really just got my license to be able to buy and sell our own properties and um, ended up deciding that I liked working with retail buyers and investors. And um, yeah, and here I am. And here and, we are. And how, how, how did you get into the whole fit? Sure. Yeah. So Matt had his busiest year in 2020 um, where he didn't see his family, didn't see his kids, and realized that he needed help. And in order in real estate in case you don't know the first hire you typically make is not always an additional agent it's usually on the operations mm -hmm. side um so we went through a very lengthy interview process with our lovely friends steve and lindsay soprani with soprani consulting um and they helped matt go through and find his next hire and help Full disclosure, I was not the first hire, but I was the best hire, as That's I correct. like to say. Um, the best and last. Best and last. Well, not typically last, <laughs> okay. because our no, operations team will grow. <laughs> yes. Um, but yep. 
last one that he'll make because the next one will be more my responsibility right. than right. his. So right. yes, you're right there. Yeah. Um, so I came on to the team in January of 2021 um, and that technically formed the Matt Harnick team at right. that point. Um, and then we grew in October mm -hmm. of 2022 um, when we added Trey Wilkins to our team. Right. Um, and our team structure is a little different than most. We don't specify that you have to be a buyer agent or a selling agent. You can, our term is utility agent. You can help whoever you want to help under the umbrella and operations of us, but it's your business. Um, so Trey joined and then in July of this year, we added Joe Havlick. Um, both of them are just rock stars and have really helped us kind of propel to success and we are looking forward to a great 2024. And building more. Yeah. And building we're still, more. We're still growing. You guys are growing. I mean, I, I went, I walked inside the, obviously your room and I was like, you got, you guys got some, got some deals in the pipeline. So we sure do. It's a yeah. very busy January. Yeah, we were, like I was telling you earlier, we were surprised it was like a boom happened yeah. right towards the tail right. end of the year. And yeah. I was like, Dang, I said to Matt right before we left for New Year's, I was like, this feels like summer. <laughs> no. I'm like, this is crazy. But I mean, I'll take it. I, our goal is to help as many families as we can because right. we don't look at real estate as a transaction business. It's a relationship business. Absolutely. And we want to build those relationships and really find the right home for our buyers and help our sellers kind of transition to then that next piece. So to be able to look at our board and see how many people we're able to help already this year just makes me so excited for the rest of the year yeah i mean there's so many things that i really look up to you guys as a team and something that i Thank would want to develop myself right so um but for someone let's just say that who is uh just starting or someone who is looking to get into the business obviously this is a tough time right uh considering i mean maybe you have your thoughts on that <laughs> <laughs> um, but I mean, obviously love to get your opinions on that. I, I personally think that it's a tougher time just because um, I started five years ago where, you know, you could fog a mirror and, um, you know, I would have a client that would always want to buy or sell a house pretty quickly. Um, I feel like it's in an era now where you actually have to be skilled. Yeah. Right? You definitely have to be skilled. So what are some things that you would suggest um, with obviously your take on like today, like what you see today as far as being an agent today versus let's just say from when you started and some of those changes. That's the first question that I'll ask you guys. Yeah. Right. So, and then the second part of that question is what would you suggest for newer agents on how they can develop their business and uh, really propel? Um, do you want to go first? Sure. I mean, I can't really speak too much on the changes, but there's, there has been changes since I first started. Right, right. Um, and when I first started, yeah, we were, people were literally knocking at the door and saying, hey, I'm ready. Hey, I need a house. Hey, I need to sell. Um, and last year was a little bit tougher just with the way that the market went, with the way interest rates went. There was a lot of kind of uncertainty and I won't get too much into it, but the media kind of did a scare storm there for a little while. And I think that freaked a lot of people out about real estate or investment in general. Um, but as far as becoming a new agent in this time frame, skills are super, super important. Yeah, right. And I think learning to <clears throat> take a step back and really find a mentor and someone that you can learn from is important because go to someone who's been in the business, like you're asking right now and say, hey, you did this when it was super crazy. You've done this when there was a huge downfall. What do you see now that I need that I should be focusing on? I mean, specific skills, I would work your database. I mean, Matt will tell you, he did a terrible job at the beginning and I'm sure he'll touch on that, but to really work who you know and then who they know and really build your database and just have conversations with people. I'm learning that as a new agent. I'm finding people in my own sphere who are like, oh, I'd love to buy, but I don't know how this works or what is your take on rates? Well, are they high? Are they not high? Right. I asked my dad, I've asked people around me, what do you think, rate? what was your mortgage rate? Yeah. I've heard 12%, yeah. someone told 18. me 19%. My parents were 18. And oh, I was God. like, are you kidding? And people are complaining about 6% now. And I'm like, <clears throat> that's really not that bad. It's in historically average. Case. You know, it's, yeah. it's where it is. Yeah. So I think 
for a new agent, if you can have those higher level conversations and kind of put it in perspective right. and kind of calm down that media sandstorm that seems to be happening, right. I think that's the best thing you can do. And I just want to go back uh, just for our listeners to, so that they understand the context of what we're talking about. Can you also define what a sphere is sure. and what a database is yeah. just so that we have a better understanding of it? Sphere is anybody that is in your little circle. So if you think about like your circle of trust or that next circle, it's whoever you talk to. And then your database is it's pretty much the same thing. It's anybody that you really talk to. You've got the sphere, which is your like close family and friends. Then you've got that next tier, which is like who they know. Then you grow out even further and you go, who's my hairdresser? Yep. Who's my plumber? Right. Who um, does my lawn? They all are part of your database. They all have either thought about or have done a real estate transaction or know people or who know do. people exactly. who do. Yeah. So it's right. just having those conversations with people and you, it doesn't have to be as blunt as, do you want to buy or sell this year? Mm -hmm. No, just have conversation. And yeah. eventually it'll slowly start to filter out. Right. It happened with me. I was having a conversation with someone close to me and they went, well, you know, we've actually been thinking about maybe combining houses and you know, what does that look like? Is land a better option versus buying a home that's already existing? And we had a great conversation about it and we're in talks continually and seeing what works for them. But it's not an instantaneous thing, but I yeah. know that <clears throat> when it comes down to it, they're gonna call me and my team. Of course, of course. Yeah. And and what's your take on that, Matt? Yeah, I mean, for so go back to your question about new agents, like what should they yeah. focus on? Yeah, so it's like a two-part question, right? So it's like, um, I think you chuckled a little bit when I said this is the hardest time for for <laughs> for, for, for me personally. So I'm, I'm yeah. gonna put it in a context, right? So five years ago, interest rates were low, right? Yep. I, I don't know exactly where they were, but I would say relation, four to four and a half probably yeah, around anything between three to 4%, let's just say, right? So um, I was always in a time where the economy was just getting better. Right? Yeah. Um, this is the first time where I have to actually deal with some level of regression. So for me, this is the biggest mm -hmm. adjustment to me. And um, five years in the business, it's not like I'm not like, <clears throat> I'm not like a complete rookie, right? But at the same token, this is my first experience with adversity. So yeah. I think for you, obviously with a lot more experience, you've dealt with, you know, 2008 was a huge time, right? So there's a difference between that and then obviously, you know, dealing with where we are today. So like kind of what are your experiences with the ups and downs of the market? Mm -hmm. And then what are your kind of take on for your perspective for newer agents that are trying to jump into business now? Um, like Mish said, it's definitely been a bit of a roller coaster. Right. Um, if, again, if you figure out, if you remember back to where I started in 2009, right. um, you were in the pit of the recession, banks weren't lending money, there was a, a housing crisis. I mean, everyone, stock market was tanked. There was, I mean, nothing was happening. So that was, that was a really low point. And I guess as it worked out, it was my first real year in it. So I didn't know any better. So I had a lot of time on my hands. So I learned how to do all kinds of stuff. Like... Yeah. open houses and like you know yeah. every chance that we had to find some shred of yeah. getting business you know we that's what we focused on right. and as the years went on um i guess you know my business picked up you know incrementally here and there until we hit probably 2000 maybe 16 or 17 <clears throat> and then it really caught on um 2018 i did i think almost um I probably did help, but between 35 and 40, actually, I'm sorry, it, um, 40 families helped. Um, 2019, and I think I was still in the 40s, 2020, 2020, I hit 50. 2021, we did 60. Oh, wow. Um, so, you know, the number of families that we're helping, you know, incrementally, yes. and then all of a sudden, then 2021 and 2022, we dropped off to like in the 40s. Um, so in terms of, the cyclical nature of the market it's it's definitely constantly this is nothing we it's nothing it's like nothing we've seen before because i mean obviously a lot of this is as a result of covid and we've never been through that kind of in recent history right, right. that kind of period in time so in terms of what i see i mean you know i think that it was definitely harder for me anyway in the very beginning like in 2009 2010 even 11 part of 12 like as the market was sort of recovering um, 
And this is different because the, the, the demand, like people have the ability to buy <clears throat> and there's, there's demand, there just isn't supply. For me, I see that that's what is the biggest issue now, not even so much the rates. Yeah. Um, it's really more of an inventory issue. And as rates, I mean, the conventional wisdom is that as rates start to come down over the next year, we believe, and they're already starting to come down a little bit, <clears throat> a lot of the buyers that have been sitting on the sidelines waiting for the rates to come down are all of a sudden going to flood the market. Um, we were with one of our lenders, you know, in November, and we had this long meeting about um, rates and about where the market's going. And Tara, thank you, shared an amazing stat with us that the average home buying age is 34 years old. And this coming year, or this year, 2024, the largest number of 34 year olds ever in the history of the United States of America is, all, is are, are of buying age because they're 34, the average age. And there's 5 million of them, which is more than ever in the history of the country. And all of a sudden, all these people are gonna be, you know, flooding the market, aside from your, more, your other buyer pools and buyer ages. So what we're seeing is that as rates start to come down, there's this massive flood of, you know, pent up demand that's going to come into the market, right. and possibly with the rates coming down, maybe there will be some more supply because the sellers that are sitting on two percent, two and a half percent, three percent mortgages, you know, maybe they'll figure out that they can now sell, and the inventory problem will be helped. But of course, with that much demand, it may not make much of a difference. What we're ultimately going to see, more than likely, is prices just going up again. Uh, yeah. Right. So to all you buyers out there that are sitting on the sidelines, buy now, <laughs> don't wait. Buy with the six and a half percent, six percent mortgage, whatever you can get, refinance down the road, it's better than paying another $100,000 for that house. Yeah, and the biggest term that I like to throw around with a lot of my clients is uh, rate lock. So a lot of people right now, um, you know, yep. they're locking in at three, four, even 5% and they do not wanna sell, right? They're reluctant to sell because <clears throat> Um, if they sell their house, great, they're getting profit off of it, but you know, they're very reluctant and their fear is that uh, you know, now they have to chase another house with a higher interest rate. Right. And so, where are they going to go? In some cases, it's like, again, they're chasing that demand. Yeah. As far as new buyers, um, I'm sorry, new agents right. you'd asked about, right. um, you know, this is definitely, in my opinion, um, as Mish said, a, a big skills-based market. Um, you're going to have to be really good on those skills and big relationship market. Um, Somehow, <clears throat> even though I had no idea what it was doing and I wasn't, I wasn't keeping up on, you know, past clients, I still did really well as as a solo agent. I just I didn't have any time to do uh, the other stuff that I should have been doing, yeah. um, which is why now, you know, with Mish added to the team, we're able to do events. We're able to do all these things that I never had the time to do or the ability to do, and we're keeping up with past clients. I mean, as a result. We've gotten some really great, last year, we really tilted our um, our percentages in terms of where our business was coming from. And for the first time last year, our sphere was the, versus um, referrals, versus new business, um, our sphere, our, the people that we knew was the biggest way that we procured new business last year and helped families was because mm -hmm. of people we already know, which is what we want, which is what new agents should be focusing on. Right, right. You figure it's the biggest thank you that you can get, yeah. right? Like you see everybody on Facebook or on Instagram, whatever, saying like the best thing you can do for a small business is just share my <coughs> stuff or right. like my posts. Talk like it. it's the same thing with real estate. The best thing you could do is throw our name in the hat and say, hey, I know somebody, they're great. Give them a try, go meet with them. Mm -hmm. yeah. We'll happily sit down for coffee. Right. You wanna come in here and just get to know each other? I would love that. Just give us an at bat. You yeah, know, it's the best thing. It's the best way to say thank you. Yeah, and to again, you know, our our premise. I mean, the, the way we talk about it, the way we just talked about it, it's on our website. We talk about it amongst each other. Is how many families are we going to help this year? Not how many sales, how many units, sales volume, etc. It's about helping people. Yeah. If that help comes in the form of sitting people down and saying, you know what, it's probably not the right time for you to buy right now, but why don't you see? We'll get you with a, one of our lenders. Um, see how much money you need to save up so that way maybe a year or two down the road, maybe it's the right time then, that's helping somebody. Mm -hmm. So it's not tractable in terms of sales volume and stuff, but that's another thing that we do is just, is however that help can be, you know, given is, yeah, is more of a fill us. your bucket kind of right. thing. Right, exactly. So with all that being said, um, 
like I'm, I'm really trying to speak at the heart of the newer agent just because of the fact that it's so I mean I, I know Matt like you, you've been in the game for so long so I think you, yeah, you have definitely. you've created I'm not saying you're a dinosaur I'm not saying you're a dinosaur I'm just saying good. <laughs> I just say that because you've created so many healthy habits as as an entrepreneur as a as a, as a realtor <laughs> some some. The prospecting part of it. Misha's helped me break some yes. as well. Let's, let's, let's say the prospecting part of it, because that's what yeah. has gotten you this far, right? You have to at least give yourself some credit, right? So with the prospecting part of it, um, one thing that I get very um, impressed about you is that uh, there's been moments where I'll walk in and you're calling an expired, like, or you're calling a FISBO, you know what I mean? Like, those are kinds of things that, um, people have to do in this business in order to you know continue with the level of production that they want to get into you know or whatever they whatever your goal is right so with that being said like i know that you work a lot of sphere you work on your database right but then there's also things that you supplement your work with right so those are the things that i feel i feel like it's not necessarily about making it is about making the cause but it's more of the mindset like Oh. Creating creating healthy habits that allow you guys to to be successful, and I think right now it's been very hard for newer agents to do that because um, they are at a time where you do have to be pretty skilled to pick up pretty quickly. I think you said a key word there, and that was mindset. Yeah, for sure. Mindset yeah. is huge because if you come in every day, and I think that's another thing, it's creating those healthy habits, it's creating those routines, and making sure that you're consistently doing the same things right. daily right so like say you want to lose weight if you go to the gym on monday but then don't go until thursday right you've got some inconsistencies and then you're wondering why you're not losing two pounds a, right. a month or whatever your your goal is it's the same thing with real estate yep. so if you're calling on one day and then not on another and then picking it up two <clears> weeks <throat> later of course you're not gonna see the results that you wanna see because there's a lack of consistency. Right. So one thing that I instituted a very, kind of like right away, I would say, was kind of creating this system of what your day should look like, right? So we break it down by morning and afternoon and here's how your morning should look. We have a morning meeting every morning at 8.30. Our team is on it. If you're not in the office, then I'm calling you and you're on it because mm. I want to know <clears throat> what you're doing what you're doing mm -hmm. and it's a quick run town it usually yeah. takes us 10 minutes unless we're coming off of a weekend then it takes usually about 15 <laughs> just because we've got a lot of wins and like good stuff that we want to talk about but right. we're usually done by 9 and from 9 to 11 I want these guys on the phone I want them prospecting like you said yeah. I want them calling their sphere I want them calling FISBOs and expireds following up with leads that they might not have heard of that's right. what they should be doing in the morning in the afternoons Honestly, I shouldn't see them. Like this is rare that he's in the af in in the afternoon. Like he should be on appointment. But if we don't have an appointment, then we're in the office. Yep. Yeah. Then, you're, then you're here. working on our business. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, those are those are great healthy habits, and I think um, there was a book actually on your shelf. I saw uh, Gary Keller, the one thing. Uh, there's a lot of things that we want to accomplish. Let's just say you want to accomplish something in a year, right? You have to synthesize that, right? You have to synthesize that that one year plan to you know, every month and then one month to, you know, every week, every week to what are you doing every day? So every day, what are you doing to get to your goal? So those are the simple healthy habits that you guys are doing. You guys are implementing your team, which is, which is gold. We follow yeah. the GPS and the yeah. 411, which is Kellerism. Um, right. We just started that this year because I kind of put a little hammer down at our team meeting and said, we need to put <laughs> this on paper and we need to really kind of focus yeah. on this. And you know the goal is when we have our team meetings monthly to just focus, bring that back up and say, okay, did we do what right. we needed to in order to reach our one goal right. for this year? Right. Um, and if we didn't, okay, how can we adjust so that next month we, we do do that? And we have that as a team and then I have it for me personal for goals that I want operations side to you know achieve in the year. So it's great. I mean, you talked about books. Another great one for learning habits is Atomic Habits. It is a great yeah. and a quick read. Um, and and who wrote that book? Oh, for shoot. Yeah. I forget his name. Atomic uh, Habits. Atomic That's Habits. I forget his name, yeah. but it is a white cover with gold okay. writing. Okay. Um, I forget his name, but okay. yes, that is a great one. 
and, sure. yeah, and I'll put it in the, yeah. in the description below. So I'll yeah, it. and and actually, in in on that point, like Joe, for example, who's a, really a fairly new agent, started with us in, in July. Um, he's he's prospecting every single day, expireds, um, for sale by owners, circle prospecting. Mm -hmm. And his activity level is phenomenal. I mean, he's he's at thirty contacts a day now. Oh wow, that's yeah. a lot. Yeah, yeah. and that's, that's like actual conversations. Like, yeah. right. who knows what his? I mean, we can track what his actual dial count is, but yeah. like to have thirty actual contacts yeah. in a day, good and he doesn't yeah. quit until he gets it. That's yeah. the other thing yeah. is create that goal and don't quit until you until you do. Right. And if thirty a day seems daunting, break it down even smaller. Yeah, because Joe and I actually had that conversation when we were going through it. I was like, does that seem like a really hard number? And he goes, a little. And I'm like, okay, well then let's break it down to before lunch, after lunch. Yep. Yeah. Does that seem a little a little less daunting? He goes, shoot, that's easy. And I was like, <laughs> see what happens? Yeah. And within yeah. the first week, he was coming to me before lunch and he goes, Peach, guess what? I didn't hit 15, but I hit 10 of one of them. It's really good. And I'm like, yeah. great, I'm so excited for you. Yeah, I mean, even for simple math, um, I know that if you're hitting roughly about uh, 50, well, conversations, right? So if you have 50 real estate conversations with people, that should generally uh, generate to one sale. So if you're hitting 30, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and that's compounding. <laughs> and right, and yeah. there's actually also research to show that, as an example, using the same example, if you're, that's a big goal, but if you're if you're hitting 50 conversations per day, that should translate into about 50 families help per year. Mm. Yeah, there's actually yeah. science behind that yeah. or studies behind that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. so for sure. And, yeah. and it's funny because, you know, <clears throat> my, you talked about the one thing and about prospecting and uh, my one thing has always been networking. So for me, it's always about, you know, knowing people, um, I'm a connector, so when clients, um, want to meet you know contractors or you know who do you know um our team now has really become really well known for like uh you know we got somebody you know yeah. just call us and if whether it's a contractor or anyone else yeah <clears throat> we'll be able to help you and um other thing that about new agents when i i was i was only licensed i'm sorry i was full-time for about a year this is about 2010 um, i joined a bni group Mm -hmm. um, like a, a weekly networking group. And there's there's more than just BNI, but that was what I chose. Um, and I was a full-time member of that for 11 years. I helped grow our chapter, and that really helped grow my business. Like, that was fundamental for me. Right. Um, it also really got me very good at, like, meeting people and coming out of my shell. I actually am a little bit of an introvert, believe it or not. Me too. Um, yeah, <laughs> we all are. Yeah, we all are. <laughs> um, so yeah, so that, that really helped me too. So I would say to new agents, you know, find something you're really good at. For me, um, I have prospected on the phone for, you know, FISBOs and expires and stuff. I don't consider it a strong suit. I can do it. Um, I don't prefer to do it. Uh, for me, it's a, I prefer the relationships that mm -hmm. I made yeah. to build on those. Right. And that, that's really helped me tremendously. Yeah. Be and I. Yeah, I mean, I feel like every person who has success in the business also, um, uh, they also have certain kind of niches for them that what makes them unique in their in their business so like obviously you have BNI you obviously have certain circles and uh, centers of influence right yeah. like you have people who are referring you business right um, for someone like me I'm very heavily involved in uh, my community like I'm Korean obviously so um, you know I'm the vice president of the Korean American Association I know or, that. Oh yeah, yeah, actually. yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, so like I'm part of certain communities or um, organizations, um, and then like you know just me being a presence in church, you know, just going to Sunday service, like something as simple as that. Like, I love jujitsu, right? So I train jujitsu. I have some clients that are you know in, yeah. in you know in the MMA scene. So like, it's just a unique. Uh, uh, part of being a realtor where you just be yourself and you gravitate towards things that really make sense to you and that you find that you enjoy so I think that's what that works for you guys right yeah actually you brought up the community um, that's one of our pillars of our, of our team and you guys are doing events like that's something that you're spearheading right yeah, yeah with the yeah. whole pie the pie day we and, do yeah, yeah and yeah. that goes just yeah. it's not just for our clients like our yeah. pie day event isn't just for 
our clients. It's also for our community as a thank you. We yep. run a community group on Facebook and everybody jokes that Matt is the, <laughs> hey, I know it guy. One of our clients called him his own personal yellow pages. Like, it's just <laughs> funny to me. That's but right. like, our, our group, like, they are our people. It's who we are surrounded by right, right. outside of our team. So we really want to give back to our local spaces where we live and, sure. you know, you thrive within them. And really it's, it's your place, it's your home, you know? So we give back in our Pi Day, we offer it out to our entire community. And we're like, we just want to say thank you. Yeah, like, in our community of like, yeah. we're talking a group of, Facebook group of close to 5,000 people now. And, and what communities do you guys want to give a shout out to? Oh gosh, so, so many. Of them. Yeah, so we actually we cover all of southeastern Pennsylvania. Okay. Okay. Um, so we are large in a lot of places, okay. but Matt's really big in like Upper Dublin, Ambler, Maple yeah. Glen. That's kind of like mm -hmm. his home. I'm a North Penn girl, so yeah. anywhere in the North Penn right. area, I that's a very big it's area. It's huge, <laughs> but like I grew up in North Wales. Yeah. I I love my little town. It's my yeah. little Stars Hollow, as yeah. I call it. Yeah. Um, my Family is up in like the Souderton area, so yeah. like I'm up there a lot as well. Joe's in Media, Trey's in Pottstown, so like we've got good mix. little mixes yeah. kind of everywhere, um, and we just we love it. Yeah. So I mean, you guys are so involved with the community, and you guys have been just so generous. Like I remember Michelle, you even called me or texted me. You were like, "Hey, you want a pie?" And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> "I was like, man, you're so generous, like so thankful." Well, like, yeah. it's a good pie too. Yeah, so you know, we wanted to make sure you guys were taken care of. Yeah. yeah so. Um, just just for our audience, they, they, they don't just say it. They really go out there and they do it. And that's one thing that really got gravitated me towards them, uh, just from your uh, generosity and just you guys being so kind. Thank you. Um, Thank you. It's such a blessing because I have to actually walk across their hall in order to get to my <laughs> office. So um, I, I, when I don't see that sign up, uh, it says the, stop. You can, always, you can always knock. You can always knock. Yes, you can always, always knock. We just might have it shut, especially if I'm like deep into a yeah. project. I don't want anybody kind of like sneaking up behind me because my yeah. back is to the door. Yeah. So I'll yeah. usually close it. That way someone does have to knock. I, I, but, so I know yeah. someone's in there, but I'm just like, you know what? I'm just going to walk <laughs> no, by. You can always, you know, can always I'll, knock. I'll, I'll yeah. do, do your thing, but... Yeah, it's, it's truly a blessing with you guys. You guys have been always like just so uh, generous, not just to uh, me, but obviously to the communities that you guys are serving. So, Thank you. Uh, I mean, apart from that, do you guys have anything upcoming, anything exciting that you guys want to share about uh, for, for the listeners, for the audience? Um, you know, as we said before, um, our team's growing. Um, we actually are... We just, we just got an, an email last night um, from an, an agent, a newer agent, that's looking to make a move uh, to Keller Williams. Nice. And she wants to talk to us about joining our team, which, I mean, there's so many great things that happen during the course of the day, but that's one of our favorites, where an agent somehow sought us out, likes what we're doing, I guess. Maybe she's watching us on social media or whatever, which is All niche. Right, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, and, and things to cost. I mean, that's actually how Joe found us. Joe, yeah. just, Joe just caught us on, I don't even remember what it was, but, and just just messaged us yeah trey same thing like he he was interviewing and decided he wanted to go with us he was okay. a showing partner for us yeah in the beginning and our clients fell in love with him and every time i'd be like i'm so sorry matt's not available but can i send trey and they go <laughs> of course you can and i was like oh okay cool thanks <laughs> yeah. so as soon as i reached out to him i was like so they want to see another one he goes I got it. I'll reach out. We'll see how many we can yeah. shove in this weekend. I was like, thanks. Yeah. You're, you're the best. And it's just, it's that kind of camaraderie and vibe. Yeah, for but sure. Yeah. And like, we've got a couple of people that have stepped up from our own like client base and yeah. people that we know that have said, Hey, I'm, I'm kind of interested. Yeah. Can we, yeah. can yeah. we have a conversation? Yeah. Like, what does this yeah. look like? And we're like, ones. yeah, yeah we're like, come ones. on in. So yeah. we've got a couple people in school. So we're, yeah. we're hoping to so, so as far as your current team and the way that yeah. the dynamic works, like explain that to the audience. Like, what are the strengths of each person? What are you finding that works for you guys? What are some things that you guys are finding that you need to work on? Like, what's the kind of whole balance of everything so far? That's a great question. I, hey, that you got to be in order to be a good real estate agent, guys. You have to ask good questions. You do. The hard <laughs> things really make me think. Um, one thing that I think we 
have done really well, which we focused on last year, it was actually one of our pillars, was getting back in touch with our clients. And yeah, really, yeah, right, yeah. like... And the events so, and the whole scene. Of yes, things, and, it's, yeah. and it's not only just the events. Like, yeah. I'm a sucker for a handwritten note, right? <laughs> so yeah. I don't know about you, but I'm so tired of, like... Cheesy postcard? Cheesy postcard. Just or the, day. like... Open you house. Don't forget to change your <laughs> clocks. Not that that's a bad thing, and I'm not saying not yeah. to do it, but supplement it with something of value and yeah. something that shows that you're paying attention. Yeah. So, like, we have a client who her daughter's going through the college process, which is what Matt's son is going through. So we'll check in every so often and be like, "Hey, is everything going going good?" We've got a couple that have a couple babies. They're either pregnant or they've just had their you know their child so we're we're constantly like looking at that little notes that say congratulations um the home anniversary cards when it's their first anniversary or any anniversary we want to make sure that you know they know that we appreciate them right. way past the closing table right. and one of the things we actually talk about um at settlement sometimes at the table sometimes when our clients are walking out the door before they walk out the door just to remember that the day that they settle <clears throat> is technically day one. Right. Not the day that we start yeah, walking, going on seeing houses. Yeah. It begins the day of settlement because yeah. now you own the house. Now there's going to be things that you're going to need to know about it. There's going to be contractors you need. You're going to have questions. We're not going anywhere. Please feel free to reach out. And we do. I mean, we have clients all the time or people in our community that, you know, you guys, would you guys happen to know a whatever? And if we don't, which usually we do, if we don't, we'll find it because yeah. we want to be that resource. Yeah. Right. Yeah. As far as our team, um, Matt is awesome at being the leader, right? And being that like, don't do that. Born leader. Like that, is he's really leader? good at that. And just being there for the agents. Before I was licensed, like I could look at some of the documents, but I didn't necessarily know like, the nitty gritty or some of the tips and tricks of how to win an offer or how to present an offer or all of those things. I would see them when it came through, but I wasn't exactly sure how to, yeah. you know, put it down to paper. We, we just talked about the, the inspection, like right off camera. We were talking about that. He was telling me about yeah. it. So yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's great at that. I mean, both Trey and Joe will go to him and go, I've got this. What are your suggestions? And kind of look at the full package and go, okay, well we could, tweak this or we could offer this or how whatever it might be to present the strongest offer to the other side or when it comes to a seller i mean we let's be honest we've all seen that multiple offer situation right, right, right. Yep. and you've got six or seven at one point that would come in they all look identical on paper right, right. they all are have similar terms and you're going how do i even explain this to my seller to make it make sense and so that they pick the right offer for them and matt will go through and go okay here are all of them here's how to lay it out here's how to present it and let them choose because it's ultimately their decision of what terms right. work best for them and it's great to watch that trey is our people person like the way that he talks to people i want to videotape him <laughs> on the daily yeah. um he's got this way <clears throat> of this like cool calm collected kind of like he's got his his tray voice yes too. we call it the tray voice because it's very um soothing and listening to him prospect he'll get people on the phone that'll hang up on matt they'll hang up on <laughs> joe but they'll pick up for him and i'm just like yeah how's he doing yeah. how do you do it it's so magic it's, it's yeah. that it's that tray magic yeah. that we say and, and joe he, is joe's energy is like i, I mean he's just like a dynamo he's yeah. just and his brain <laughs> is constantly on the flow of ideas and like yeah. thinking of the next thing and so i, I yeah. joke i have like the map book of ideas but now i've got like the tray tab and i've got the joe tab because like each of them are bringing something different, different to the table but yeah. that's yeah. what makes us so yeah. unique is For that sure. okay matt not 100 percent sure let's throw it out to everybody we've got a group chat and just say hey here's what i'm presented with what are your ideas what do you think right and then i don't always toot my own horn but like on the backbone. I was going to tune it for her, but go ahead. Yeah, like no, on no, the no. backbone. Like <laughs> I kind of like oversee everything and just make sure that they're doing what they should be doing. And then when it comes to clients, like I think I have a little magic touch when it comes to talking with people. Yeah. Definitely. Um, yeah. It's just my 
bucket filler and my little like thermometer goes through the roof when I get to talk to our clients. And the day that we get to call them and say like, you're under contract, we just did one of them on Friday and to be on that phone call, it was a veteran. And has, like, had some really difficult circumstances. Uh, and, and now he and his puppy get exactly what they were looking for in the area that they were looking for. Like it just, on a snow day when you're like snuggled up and then yeah. to get that phone call, like it was just, the best feeling. And Misha's superpower, by the way, because again, she doesn't toot her own horn enough, <laughs> is that if you think about it, like agents, generally speaking, have a certain type of brain and they're sort of wired a certain way. And one of the ways that most of us, me especially, are not good is in the, the operations side, the planning side, the analytics of it all. And there's, there's just, there's so much to being a really good, solid agent that most agents just don't have that other piece of it. I definitely don't, which which again is, is why we're working together. And Mies just has just this way of organizing things and seeing like the logical brain of how to put stuff together. And you know, we'll, sometimes we'll just talk about like even about putting our logo on things and <laughs> we'll have these conversations about, you know, how do we do this? and. You know, we kind of pick it apart, and we and we just all of a sudden arrive at this like, oh my God, moment where we got it, and it comes from sort of like the yin and yang relationship, um, where Misha is very analytical, and I'm like the opposite. I'm like full on like emotional thinker. You know, um, we call it a driver personality. Like on that scale, I mean, we're sort of like opposites, but we complement each other perfectly in terms of the way we see things, the way we do things, and that's just what makes it a complete team. Because mm -hmm. everybody wants a niche, but only one team's got it. <laughs> and believe me, I can attest to that, so. I was just showing yeah. you some of our little behind the scenes stuff that I created, and I was yeah. like, do you want a copy of it? Templates, I, will I share. got him. I will share, yeah. I am. I will share, I will hop on a Zoom. I actually have a Zoom in about an hour with someone to go through yeah. some stuff that we do that he's curious about. And I was like, put time on my calendar. I'll happily walk you yeah. through it. That's one of the great things, not only certainly about me for sure, but this office in general is just so willing to help. Like when I first came here, I was told, you know, those you know, the doors are always open and if they're not, you knock, yeah. like we just said. Um, and there's always people willing to share and help and teach and educate, and it's true. I mean, that's what makes us really unique, not just as a, as a team, but as part of a greater office, as part of a greater brokerage. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I don't know any other brokerage that, that operates that way. Mm -hmm. yeah, for sure. We're, we're very heard, fortunate. I've heard some stories of conventions and things that I've gone to where I just feel bad for other operations professionals because they don't have that sense of community and that sense of yeah. like, hey, I need help, I'm struggling here. Right. I've got that within my office. I've got it within my team. Ops Boss. I've got it within Ops Boss. I've got it within Soprani. They have their own little group of their hires. So like I have all these outlets that I can go to if I'm struggling that I just am so grateful for. Yeah, we should actually put a little tiny plug in there for Ops Boss yes. too. Yes, love them. Shout out. If you got an Ops professional, <laughs> talk to me. Yeah, Ops Boss is basically a convention and a lot more than that, but it's like, it's a whole community of operations people in real estate around the country. Um, and Mish has just, uh, in October, went to her third convention, um, which, it, you know, for agents, like our, our, our thing is, you know, the way that we're connected to other agents is just huge in terms of helping us grow and helping us mastermind together. And ops professionals have that too. So if you're an ops professional watching, again, connect with Mish and she'll, help, she'll share it with you. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, just going back and kind of like, uh, pivoting a little bit here. So my next question would be, I think you guys um, view yourselves as almost a quarterback for a lot of your clients. Like, hey, who do you know that is Absolutely. doing this or that? And I think a lot of that has to come with the BNI, you know, like having experience with BNI and Definitely. being able to refer. We actually refer to ourselves that way as okay. the yeah. quarterback for the entire real right. estate process. Yep. And and even for me, like I came from a financial services uh, industry, so like that's the same thing. So like where people used to look at me as someone to ask like, hey, who do I know that does, you know, banking, financial service. I still know those people, but you know, when I was working in that industry, anything to deal with money, yeah. I would always like refer like a different subset of what I didn't do. Same thing in the real estate world, like 
where we provide the most value is not buying or selling a house. Where we provide the most value is who the hell do we know the support that does the job correctly and does it right, whether it's a contractor. Inspectors, absolutely. Yeah, so, so, so I, find, title. I find that that's kind of where we have brought the most value to our clients was, was, was being that quarterback for that situation. So that's one thing I did want to yeah. harp on that. Yeah, so, it's 100% yeah. true. I mean, like Matt said, it's the start at the end, right? So you go through this sometimes lengthy and emotional process and you're so excited when you finally get the keys in your hand and then you walk in and you go, now what? Now uh, what? Yeah. And <laughs> oh my God, I hate this paint color and yeah. this carpet is hideous. Yeah. And you're just standing there and especially first time home buyers, they might not know anybody, especially if they are from out of state and yeah. they're moving here for, right. you know, either to be closer to family or a job or whatever. We are those that we sometimes are their only people that they might know. Yeah, I mean, you flip homes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and so sure. do I. I mean, this is like, so the people that we recommend by and large are people that you too, I'm sure, that we've used. Of course. I asked you for contractors yeah, the other day. I sure. mean, that's, yeah. it's great to know that you have a relationship with those people because yeah. invariably someone's going to need them. Yeah, and I think also like because um, you're in space, but like for me as well, like um, a lot of people think of me as an investor and also a realtor as synonymous, although it's not the same. I mean, no. I'm just gonna be honest with you, it's not. No. But because of me having the difficult time of explaining the difference between the two, I just kind of, I just said, you know what, like. I'll just take that identity and, and, and run with it, right? Yeah. So do you call yourself an agent investor or investor agent or something else? It's whatever they call me. Like, are you an investor? <laughs> sure, I am. I actually am. What do you want to know? And then I just, I just kind of peel the onion. Like, yeah. hey, what do you want to know? And then I kind of go from there. Are you a realtor? Hey, what do you want to know? And then I kind of go from there. So, um, but because of me having that synonymous like uh, outlook and maybe you have that same kind of outlook as well yeah. um i i run with it so if they ask for a reference or if someone asks for a reference or if someone asks you know whatever right i always try to come uh with a place of uh, contribution and always just trying to provide value in that way yeah i mean like when i'm going through houses with clients especially with clients that are a little handy or have ideas about changing their house um you know, when we go through, uh, obviously I get a lot of feedback from the buyers, but when they start talking about, you know, moving walls or reconfiguring spaces, um, flipping rooms and do all kinds of stuff, it's nice because I've, I've done that. So, and you have too, I'm sure. So yeah. when There's we're a value going through with them, that. yeah, yeah I mean, it's yeah. like we've, we've, we've got vision that, yeah. you know, agents that haven't done it just wouldn't have. Right. Um, so it really helps to be able to go through and say, you know, you go into the basement, you figure out which way the joists are running and okay, the walls are running in the same direction, generally speaking, are not, you know, supporting walls, you can probably move them or get rid of them, etc. And what I notice is like, when we're talking about these things, you may do it too. It's like, you notice your clients are like, you know, they're really like taking notice and they're listening actively about, and they're learning something. It's they're we're not just going into a house and, you know, oh yeah, I like this. I didn't like this one. You know, it's always asking deeper questions. Like, what didn't you like about it? If there was something you could change that would help you, you know, find that this is the right one, what would that be? Right. And all those questions really serve our clients great in a, in a really good way because it's it's not just they're not just dismissing houses and, and even if it's not the right one, you can still learn something from it. Right. Right. On that right. journey of finding the right house. Right. And and it's like going back to our first topic. It's it's super skill based. Like if yeah. if you have certain skills that, or sub subset of skills that are very unique to you in nature, um, that's what really draws you out, um, you know, more, you know, more, you know, with higher desirability than maybe someone else, like a different agent. I mean, there's 30,000 plus agents in the Philadelphia area, and that number's coming down because some agents are leaving the business because, you know, it is a little more challenging right now. Um, but the agents with the skills and the relationships are the ones that are gonna remain and also flourish, so. Keep an eye on this guy. We've been talking about newer agents or what we consider yeah. like yeah. a newer agent. If it's something that you're interested in and want to learn more about or learn that skill of being able to see if you can move a wall or um, the electric, whatever, yeah. talk to one of the agents in your office and say, hey, I see you've got XYZ property listed. Do you mind if we walk through and you just kind of show me 
if I ask these questions, yeah. what that might be, mm -hmm. I guarantee you they will be, of course, let's go. Right. Especially when you get in an office like ours where it's so collaborative, which right. I never thought, I mean, my first day in that, I was like, yeah. I figured it would be like all of the shows on TV where they're very like catty and mean to each other. And then I walk in and my I joined during the, I won't say the tail end of COVID because it was still pretty hot no, okay. when I joined. Um, but doors were open and people were like, hey, how are you? Hi, you're working with Matt now, let's do this. Let's." And I was like, what's going on? <laughs> I'm like, what the heck? And like the first day where there was a ton of people in the office, yeah. Matt will tell you, I actually shut the door because I got so overwhelmed because there were so many people that were coming to say hi. I was yeah. like, I'm so sorry. I need to like just become a hermit for a second because this is not what I was expecting. Yeah. Now I'm used to it. Now. Yeah. Yes, I will say hi to anybody. Okay. But plus, yes. I mean, plus, we talked about every day being different. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's one of the great things that keeps someone like me with, you know, you know sometimes um, I have a short attention span, so it really does help when every day is different because <laughs> I never know what's coming next, and I, I thrive on that. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, it, and it's true. I mean, like, I promised that with each, and I think it's held true for the last three years. Oh, it has. It has. Every day. So yeah, I mean, uh, to kind of wrap things up, I mean, where do you guys see yourselves in the future as far as development? Obviously, you guys are looking for new hires. You have people that are you, you're hiring. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, that's a new thing that you guys are working on. Um, where do you guys see yourself in the future as far as just that, as well as what you have in store for your clients, and um, also in just like the level of production that you plan on doing for, for the new year? Sure. So um, we've got a big goal of partnering with an amazing, I'll call them organization, platform. platform. Um, we That is like our one thing that we are really kind of hoping and pushing towards this year. Not leaving Keller Williams. Not leaving Keller Williams. <laughs> it's an overlay, overlay brokerage Keller Williams. Yes, yes. So we, um, <clears throat> we're very excited about that opportunity as far as production wise. Our or let's rephrase that word to uh, helping. Yeah, you have to say helping. I keep yes. saying production, and that's like my fault. So, so <laughs> I have to learn we, how to yes. rephrase that word. We yeah. break down our helping goals into two, okay. um, just because we have the goal that we have set, and then we always call it our reach goal, or like if right. we could map out the stars and the moon, what would it be? So we would love to help, I believe it's 80 families this year. Okay, um, solid. And With our, a reach goal of? A reach goal of 100. Okay, solid. Uh, it's a solid goal and- That's as I, a team, right? As a team. Yeah, right. As a team, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, that is our- So far we're off to a pretty good start. Great start. Yeah, um, you're killing it. And in terms of, so in terms of hires, um, you know, as, as we grow, um, we're definitely gonna have to add, um, you know, uh, another operations person wow. for sure. Okay. We'll have yeah, to, we'll I mean, have to as we get down the road. Um, yeah. And as far as, you know, agents, you know, you know, there's definitely agents that we're in alignment with that I think are, um, I mean, we're in talks with, you know, a couple of experienced agents um, or more experienced agents that have some production, but, haven't been able to find, you know, someone to help them get over that next level. Right. Um, so our thought was like, join us, you know, yeah. we can, we can make that happen and we can help you and they can help us. So we have like agents, as Mish said, that are in school, um, that are just haven't even begun their real estate career. Right, right. There's experienced agents that have, you know, uh, something to offer and, and something to, you know, we can offer each other something. And then there's you know, agents in the middle with some production that just, again, may just really try to figure out how to get over that next comp. Um, one of the beautiful things about having, you know, Mish as an operations person, having an operations person, especially if it's the best one, um, <laughs> is that once, you know, as agents, once, once we um, go under contract, Misha's specialty in that whole process is what we call the contract to close right. piece of it, of that timeline. Once we go under contract, you know, taking that whole entire process through to settlement, um, with the exception of like certain things, like you know, as an as an agent, as agents on our team, um, each of us still do our own negotiating in terms of inspections, etc. But you know, Mish really handles that entire process. Right. Well, there's agents out there that would love to probably double their business, but just don't have the time. So again, it's like join yeah. us. You have and we'll someone, figure out how to do that. You have someone to do a lot of that. A lot of the marketing, obviously, you're helping oh, out with. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, 
there's a lot of value add that your team definitely brings. And one of the things that I also want to stress to the audience and to the people is that the reason why I love this team is that um, I can tell you firsthand that they're not trying to grow like laterally, they're trying to grow vertically. Like they're really trying to grow within yep. the company or within you know your, your, your team. And grow so, and grow smartly. Yes. Just, you yeah. took the words out of my mouth, yeah. grow smartly. Yeah. Um, we are huge on culture within right. our team. Right. So Paramount, it's culture. Number one, and we have our visions and everything in place. And sure. we just wanna make sure that if you're on our team, you are part of our family because that's what we look yep. at each other. So. Yeah, like it's it, it's super collaborative. Like it's like I mean, technically I'm not on the team, but I feel like I'm you're family. family. You're family. Knock <laughs> it off. Yeah, you but, are definitely. But you guys family. are so you guys have been just so gracious to me, so nice. So um, I, I, I I I I do feel that you know. I, I'm part of you guys. You are. You know? you're, an, you're an extension, <laughs> so, of course. Absolutely. So, um, yeah, but yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, just for our audience as yeah. well, for time's sake, like, um, where can they find you guys? Sure. And what's the best way to reach you guys? Me is the best way to reach me. Um, our website is harnickteam.com. I'm sure they will post it here for you guys. Yeah. Um, on socials, we are the Matt Harnick team on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, which is not super active, but I promise getting you there. we're getting, getting there. there. <laughs> we're getting there. Um, those are our majors, um, but if you go on our website, that's probably the best place. It's got all of our contact information. Okay. Anything you want to add, Matt? No, it just thanks for having us. I mean, yeah, really appreciate it. I mean, it's always great to be able to, you know, talk to someone that we obviously, you know, respect as well and admire and, you know, Thanks for getting us to talk about ourselves. We don't get yeah, to do that. We don't much. Get to do that and, and, and honestly, I think it's so unique because this is our second time doing it. The first time was just completely different than the first time, the second time we talked. So yeah. um, it was yeah. a pleasure. It really was. Of Thank course. you. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you. Thanks everybody. All right. Now I leave real estate, find you the best rate. All throughout Philly, like Google Expressway. Talking to people who added a 215, even a 267, who always helping, like, oh, no time for no scrutiny.